60% of the body weight is made up of water. So to calculate the total body water, 60 divided by 100 or 0 0.6 into the weight in kilograms will give you the TBW. The TBW is divided into three compartments. The extracellular fluid is one third of the total body water and the intracellular fluid is two third of the total body water. In the extracellular fluid, 25% is formed by the plasma and 75% is formed by the interstitial fluid, both of which have the same composition except that plasma has a higher level of proteins. And because water can freely diffuse across compartments, the fun fact is only 25% of the IV fluid that is administered at the end of one hour will remain in the plasma. The remaining 75% is in the interstitial fluid and then gets excreted. Fun fact. Water can freely diffuse across all the three compartments but electrolytes cannot. Therefore, either an increase or decrease of volume in any one compartment will either increase or decrease total body water. In hyperglycemia, there is an increase of glucose in the plasma. Therefore, water gets drawn into the plasma and there is the relative hyponatremia. Therefore, for every 100 mg per deciliter of rise of glucose above normal, there is a drop of sodium 1.6 mg equivalents per liter. Because the solid viscera and muscles have higher water content, the obese individuals who have more fat have lesser amount of total body water up to 20% lower. The malnourished have 10% higher TBW because of lesser amount of fat. Infants have a maximum water content of 80% which reduces to 65% by the end of the first year. The major cation of the extracellular fluid is sodium whereas the major anions are chloride and bicarbonate. The major cation of the ICF is potassium and magnesium whereas the major anion are phosphates and sulphates. The sodium potassium pump pumps sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell and maintains the balance of sodium outside and potassium inside. The physiological activity of an electrolyte depends upon the amount of particles per unit volume called the millimoles per liter, the electrical charges or the chemical combining activity per unit volume called the milli equivalents per liter and the amount of osmotically active units per unit volume called the milli osmoles per liter. For example, a liter of normal saline has 9 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in it Therefore, it has 154 millimoles of sodium and 154 millimoles of chloride. Since the valency of sodium and chloride is 1, it also has 154 milli equivalents of sodium and chloride. Supposing we take calcium, it has a valency of 2. Therefore, 1 millimole of calcium is equal to 2 milli equivalents of calcium. If you compare sodium chloride and K2Cr2O7, since K2Cr2O7 has more elements, it will exert more osmotic force as compared to NaCl. The fun fact is that all compartments maintain their molar concentration, electrical neutrality and osmolar activity on either sides of the cell membrane. But for a 70 kg individual, the average intake remains 2.5 liters a day. One drinks 1.5 liters of water, obtains around 800 ml from the solid food and 300 ml is the water of oxidation which is released when carbohydrates are being metabolized. On an average a 70 kg individual will excrete 2.5 liters of water a day, 1.7 liters of urine, 600 ml of insensible loss from the skin and the lungs and 300 ml of water in the stool. Acute hypovolemia as in shock presents with CVS and CNS signs. Chronic hypovolemia presents with tissue signs. Acute hypervolemia presents with congestive cardiac failure and pulmonary edema more commonly seen in the elderly as opposed to fit young individuals. Chronic hypervolemia presents as anasarca. Thus the take home message is that 60% of the body is made of water and it is divided into three compartments. The sodium potassium pump is responsible to maintain this balance and every cell maintains its molar concentration, electrical balance and osmolar balance. Acute volume changes present with CVS and CNS signs. Chronic volume changes present with tissue signs.